6th grade, module 6, lesson 2, problem set. Number 1. The data plot below shows the vertical jump height in inches of some NBA players. A vertical jump height is how high a player can jump from a standstill. A. So here's the plot. Um, it shows it ranges anywhere from 32 inches to, looks like this would be 43 inches. So what statistical question do you think could be answered using this data? So they've already told us that it shows the vertical jump height of some NBA players. So let's, so this is probably saying or answering the question, what are the vertical jump heights of NBA players? So that's the question we're answering. What was the highest vertical jump by a player? So the highest is right here, which would be 43 inches. And then what was the lowest vertical jump? That's down here, 32 inches. What was the most common vertical jump height? The height that occurred the most often. So the one with the most dots is right here at 38 inches. E, how many players jumped the most common vertical height jump? So this one, how many dots are there? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there were 10 players who jumped the, the most common height of 38 inches. How many players jumped higher than 40 inches? So we're looking for higher than 40. So anything this way and above, there's one, two, three. So just three players. G, another NBA player, jumped 33 inches. Add a dot for this player on the dot plot. So another one jumped 33 inches. Let's find 33 right there. So add your dot. How does this player compare with the other players? So they're at 33. I would say they're on the lower end of the vertical jump, so they didn't jump as high as the typical player. So let's say they jumped the same as two other players. other players and we could say and only higher than one other player the person who jumped 32 inches they jumped higher than that person number two below are two statistical questions and two different dot plots of data collected to answer these questions Match each statistical question with its dot plot and explain its cho each choice. Okay, so A, what is the number of fish, if any, that students in the class have in an aquarium in their homes? So it could range anywhere from zero fish to 10 fish, or dot plot B would be anywhere from two fish to six fish. So we need to see which one is more realistic for it, that one. and. Right off the bat, I'm thinking 0 to 10 is probably more realistic because I wouldn't think everyone in the class would have fish. I mean, I don't have an aquarium, so I would be 0. Whereas on dot plot B, everyone has at least two fish. But let's look at B. How many days of the week do the children on my street go to the playground? Well, days of the week, there are only seven days of the week. So if we're looking at dot plot A, someone over here says that they went to the that children on their street go to the playground 10 days a week. But that doesn't make sense, right? Because there's only seven days a week. So that means that dot plot B must go with B. And then we can say dot plot A officially goes with A. Um, explain each choice. So kind of what we said before, some may not have any fish. Let 
Wow, someone else has 10. And then dot plot B makes sense because any range is from two to six days. Six days at the playground. Number three. Read each of the following statistical questions. Write a brief description of what the dot plot of the data collected to answer the question might look like. Your description should include a description of the spread of the data and the center of the data. All right, A, what is the number of hours sixth graders are in school during a typical school day? So number of hours that sixth graders are in school during a typical school day probably wouldn't have a big spread, right? You're all pretty much in school for the same amount of time, maybe like, six or seven hours a day aside from people who might leave early to go to like a doctor's appointment or have some app like maybe you stay longer at school because you have after school activities but based on that then it should be anywhere from like i don't know five to eight or so hours so the spread's not going to be very large so let's say most students are in school for the same number of hours Um, description of the spread so the spread will not be very large some might leave early for appointments or stay later for after school activities. But really, we're not gonna get anywhere beyond like, probably like 12 hours a day. So that's not a very large spread. So B, what is the number of video games owned by the sixth graders in our class? So this could have a pretty large spread, right? It depends, like me personally, I don't think I have, I don't think I had any video games growing up but or maybe I had like two but there were other people in my class who had probably like 50 or maybe more video games I don't know but a, there's gonna be it's gonna be hard to find a center because everyone is going to be so spread apart so let's say this would have a very big spread have a large spread Some students may not have any video games. While others may have they have a lot. So it would be hard to identify a center. Um, Maybe, does it say we need to identify a center? Your description should include a description of the data spread and the center of the data. So maybe the average, the center might be around five. Maybe the average student has around five video games. Did we say the spread or the center would of the um, number of kids in class? back to A. So the center would probably be around 